everybody uh, it's hello. david and heather we're live and Carissa oh my goodness Fuentes. we're live we yep. are live i did not Hi, know everyone. i had no warning hello i was over here talking about my water bottle just like, to put it. <laughs> behind the scenes <laughs> all so right this, is, this yes. is really cool so you guys are right there all right we're gonna see your comments over, over here. here yeah so if we have like weird yeah here we go we're just give us a second to get our tech we angle it right there we Look, go. We're gonna get our tech stuff all unlocked here. <sighs> Fix it. All right. Hold on. Because it's, it's delayed. Yay! There we, go. there we go. Is that it? That's perfect. All right. Yeah, I had to get the we had to get the tech all tweaked. Um, you guys, welcome, welcome, Yay. welcome, welcome. And today we're gonna be talking about real relationship goals and how to be a power couple and what exactly that takes. Yes, real relationship goals for the power couple. Um, and we asked Crystal Fuentes, our friend from The Ladies Coach, founder of The Ladies Coach. If you don't follow her, go do it. And you will want to go do it after this talk. Definitely. Um, yeah, she also wrote How to Be Hot. This amazing book, which is an awesome book, by the way. How to Be Hot, which is... You've got the second part of the book. Yes, right. your Happy, guide. open, and trusting in your relationships. Yes. <laughs> what <a universe>. <laughs> <laughs> But we're going to have a giveaway at the end, which is yes. going to feature this book. So Hi, some Christy. other goodies. Christy it's says Christy. everyone needs Crystal in their life. Oh, yes. everyone needs a Christy in their life as well. Yes. So we're going to, you're going to have a little bit of Crystal in the giveaway in her book and some Crystals from us that have to do with love and relationships. Right. Yes. So it's a, we'll show you the giveaway at the end, but in order to qualify for the giveaway, you've got to be on the live call at the end because we're going to pull a number out of the hat and we're going to see who's commenting and engaging and we'll give you a little cue to when to do that. Right. Yes. Um, but so you've got to watch to the end and you've got to be commenting at that time to be in the uh, drawing thing to win. Right. The, the giveaway. Thing. To win the giveaway. Yes. So You guys got some really cool gifts over here. I know. Oh, yeah. We do. We're not good. You're giving the giveaway all that? Yes. yes. Okay. That's how we do it. Yeah. And I win this giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> you get the special deal. Okay. We'll right. talk Thank about you. it later. Thank All right. You. So if you are coming on live with us, um, get a notebook out, get your pencils ready, because we're going to throw a lot of information at you. We know mm -hmm. there is so much information out there about what your relationship goals should be. Mm -hmm. And we ask Crystal because she hears it all because she is a love and relationships coach. She is the ladies coach. And so coach. she's got a really great perspective on what is realistic mm -hmm. in a relationship and what people kind of fantasize about. And what yeah. is cuckoo. Right. So we're gonna, what's straight cuckoo? What's we're going to be saying, we're going to yeah, say, straight up we, might say, about that we might say that a bit. So we're going to talk about what are the best relationship goals for you to be able to be a power couple. Yes. And we're also going to be giving you some relationship secrets. Yes. Yeah. So right. if you know any relationship couple that you consider to be a power couple, drop that in the comments below. Yeah, so um, go ahead and start thinking about questions you want to ask us. Drop them in the comments. Mm -hmm. David's over here fielding those, and we're going to answer those either during the call or at the end we're going to have a Q&A. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. Who are your relationship goals? I mean, like if I think of one that I would, I mean, like growing up, mm -hmm. I would definitely say... Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell. Right, mm -hmm. right. What are yours? Um, I was thinking like Fred and Wilma Flintstone. <laughs> they like, you know what? They had it yes. together. Fred and yeah. Wilma. They were like, she was strong, but she was also feminine, and yeah. he was like, he could get like angry and very masculine, but he also like would sweep off her feet and just yeah. love on her, and it was like, mm -hmm. yeah. I think they that, were like, they beautiful. were like, you know, Fred and Wilma. They kind of yeah. rock. But I'm, I'm gonna go way out in left field, and I'm gonna say Batman. And um, Alfred. Oh, because they got all secrets and they just they just held it together. That actually, is pretty. That's kind of good. So we're not necessarily cool. talking about yeah. a love relationship right. here, it but be like yeah, power couple. They but are a power couple. Absolutely. You're right. You're right. Yeah. There you go. I love that. Who? What? What are? What is everyone else? Let's saying? see. Crystal and Andrew. Um, Ooh, oh, oh yes. thank you. I doubled with that. Chelsea. Yes. Okay, so I didn't even oh. see who's online, but Chelsea is online. Well, we got Hi, all Chelsea. the Chelsea's in the house. We got Chelsea and Chelsea. Yes. And Floor's here. And Christy Aww. and Floor. Yay. Oh, you guys were so happy you were here. 
This is, is here. so amazing. I don't even know if you see it. So I can't see. Yeah, that's Ricky. Uh, oh, it's Ricky? Uh -huh. As in Ricky? Uh -huh. Roar. 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 Yeah. Ricky Roar in the house. There it is. Absolutely. Okay, because you change your screen name is something I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like it doesn't say Ricky, so don't no raise it. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We're Welcome. so happy to have you here. Yes. So, okay, now that we've talked about who you think power couples are, and yeah. continue to pop them in the comments yeah. for us because we're really yes. curious about. So, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, drop where you're from in the comments yes. as well as who you consider to be a power couple. Yeah, we want to know what you think. And for those of you who are watching after the live, do the same thing in the comments. Let us know who your power couple would be. We want to know, and also, if you want to elaborate, tell us why. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? What qualities do you consider to be a power couple in that instance? That's really important. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about what is a power couple. Yeah. Yeah, so what would be your definition as a love coach of a power couple? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's really important that we talk about this because I, you know, my, I help modern women, right. you know, navigate relationships around them and the modern world, we have social media and technology. And so it's so easy to throw what we think would be a power couple or right. relationship goals because mm -hmm. we see somebody, you know, that seems happy or, you know, we see a strong woman and maybe a strong man, but you don't really know what happens behind closed doors. But my, um, and what I think we're going to be talking about yeah. a little bit, is my definition of a power couple are two people who own who they are, are very clear about their strengths and weaknesses, and can really co-create in a relationship together, um, and do so in a way that's free and not restricting, but also amplifying each other's lives. I think that's a pretty solid definition. I think we're done with we're done. live. Because that, done. that, that killed, really it. killed it. I mean, that was like amazing. Drop a truth bomb in the comments if that yes. was not the most amazing description of a power couple. So what I'm hearing is that the IG photos you have of the couple on the beach with their mimosas and their like... Hashtag cute. All of that. Hashtag cute. Okay. Um, are just, it might look great on paper. But unless you are totally free to be yourself mm -hmm. and you're independent with yourself and you feel free within the relationship to express yourself and yeah. you're a power couple. Yeah. I mean, that's like in a nutshell, freedom to be yourself. 100%. You know, and I, I think what you said about your weaknesses too. I mean, free to like be vulnerable with your weaknesses. Yes. And I think that that's huge because yeah. I think a lot of people um, and go get in relationships not really being vulnerable enough to show yes. what their weaknesses mm -hmm. are. I mean, like, you know, and I think that the number one thing I hope I help women with is to focus on the things that your 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 strengths are, um, because I think a lot of times we get so insecure on what we lack, and it's really important that we show that when we're showing up for a partner, because our partner mm -hmm. is, you know, essentially both of you are showing up, you know, showing mm -hmm. with your strengths, but also you guys are going to have completely different strengths. Mm -hmm, totally. And what, you know, especially with you guys and what I see with you two, um, what you are so solid in, he's solid in different ways. Right. And you guys have this flow of energy that goes back and forth and you both are completely different, but also unified in your, you know... <sighs> You know, I think that's it. I like unified. If you are unified as a couple and you've got each other's backs, even yeah. if you have different goals and different different likes and loves, if you support each other, that is the most important thing. Yeah. Yes. So you've got to show up not only for yourself but for your partner because if that partner is enough for you to show up for, then that's a a, um, a signaler, a a signal, a sign, a signaler, a, sign. A, sign. Yes, a signaler, a signifier. Um, Go this way for your relationship goals. Um, yeah, that's a sign that you've chosen this partner because of their strengths. Mm -hmm. And if you're lifting them up, they're in turn lifting you up. And yeah. that's kind of what brings you guys together. Well, I think it's also about turning your strengths, your weaknesses into strengths. Yeah. Because every weakness is a strength undiscovered and, and you know developed. So I think yeah. if you help each other with those... You know, it's just, it's a matter of freedom, like you said. Yeah, and I think both people want to be able to contribute. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yes, there's, you know, when you, if you're with the right partner, which essentially what a power couple is, right. is mm -hmm. choosing the right partner, and that has a lot to do with you building that relationship with yourself. And, and I know you've got some, like, secret tips yeah. for us about that at the end that we're Ooh. saving. Yeah. Um, but, you know, 
we want to show up for your partner. And mm-hmm. so focusing on everything that we lack, you know, yes. our partner wants to show up as well. And I think that both partners, like both people showing up for what they can bring mm-hmm. is going to help, isn't going to really shine a light on the things that you're, you're, you're weak in because I think that you navigate and you're driving mm-hmm. this relationship bus with both people, like, on, you know. Navigating the Navi- Yeah, with their strengths. Co-navigating. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think I want to talk about, um, next we're going to get into actual relationship goals that we all sat and hashed out together for yeah. like the last few hours we've been sitting here drinking wine. Um, and, you know, really, oh, yeah. really. It was fruit juice. It was, okay. It, it was Stella Rosa. So that's like just <laughs> a step above Martinelli's. It's just like barely. And just in case you guys are wondering why I'm looking off camera, I'm actually responding to everybody's comments. Right, looking and in the comments. Got, he's got a monitor over here. And doing it. So rock on, David. But I, I, think, just, yeah. I think mm-hmm. I think for me, we were talking about different relationship goals because we yeah. hear from our clients what, you know, and I happen to happen on a list of relationship goals a couple of weeks ago. I told Crystal this before <laughs> the live. I was like, well, I see this in a lot of lists. If you're comfortable going to the toilet in front of your partner, then that's like, a huge milestone. And I'm thinking, you know, back in high school or college, I was drunk enough. I could probably pee in front of anybody. You know what I mean? So That's not a I real think, relationship goal. You know, not now because I'm no. grown. But um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not vulnerability. That's, that's just, not an indicator. I got to pee really bad. So I, that's, right. Yeah. Right. I think that's, we've got to really look at the extremes. Can you be really vulnerable? That's not what vulnerability means. Yeah. Or does it look good on IG? Yeah. You yeah. Know, two different extremes, and neither of them is true. Yeah. I think. So, well, I know. Yeah. Hashtag selfie is not hashtag relationship goals. <laughs> just because you can hashtag selfie with each other doesn't mean you're a solid relationship. Or just because you can hashtag relationship goals doesn't mean you are a relationship. Yes. Bam. So, you guys, take a minute, drop a truth bomb in the comments. If you're loving this, hit subscribe so you can get more of this content because we're yeah. doing, we do these lives every month. Um, and we I drop a new video it. personally. So Every week, every Tuesday, we drop a new video. And actually, we drop two videos a week. We drop a, a video every Tuesday and then a meditation every Thursday. Yes. Well, they, yeah. Anyway. So let's get You let's guys are the first to, to hear that. Yeah. So we've been doing it on the same day, but Thursday is going to be meditation day. Yes. Let's get back to how our, to be a power how couple. How to be a yeah. power couple. So here are, we're going to pick five, but we're mm-hmm. probably going to get into more. Of course. But the first one we kind of picked that is a real relationship goal for a power couple is. If your partner's biggest flaw just gets a meh from you, right. like if they're out in public and do something that might otherwise embarrass you or they do weird things, it's like, it doesn't... It's not a deal yeah. breaker. It's not a deal breaker. You're not going, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. When you start taking your shirt and putting it over, because your partner is doing something, that's not a power couple. That's not a real relationship. Yeah. Right. If you're embarrassed at your mm-hmm. partner. And the same goes with, with since we were talking about strengths and weaknesses. If you use their weaknesses against them, you know, I think that that's such a huge indicator that you aren't really, you know, um, there for their best interests, you know. And obviously there's something, there's values that aren't aligning. And I think that that's a really huge indicator as well. Because you're not supporting them. Mm-hmm. I want to elaborate on this one a little because mm-hmm. I will admit that I have done this with ex-partners. Mm-hmm. And I've been out in public and they took the shirt off and they had a little bit of a roll or something and I got really embarrassed like oh my gosh I hope I'm not seen with them and I thought it was really shallow of me and I beat myself up about it but I realized later it was more than I'm just embarrassed because they took their shirt off it's that they didn't fit me it was more like it's they just don't fit me yeah and because otherwise that stuff doesn't bother me I had to take a look at am I really being shallow or is this an indicator of this relationship's just not right for me? It yeah. had more to do with the relationship didn't fit. So if you find yourself doing that, and this is a real life scenario that yeah. we hear people right. come in when we do couples counseling mm-hmm. is I I'm feel so, so shallow right. and I feel like it's, you know, yeah. I'm just such a jerk because I'm not, I, this stuff shouldn't matter to me. Um, it might actually not be as shallow as you think. There might be a deeper indicator that something is off in the relationship. Yeah, absolutely. It it might be a deeper subconscious indicator like Heather's talking about that this person is not supporting you in the way that you want to be supported. They're not on the same level that you are. And if you're feeling embarrassed, you have to look at why you're in that relationship. Yeah. I think also um, 
it could be an indicator of a loss of attraction in the relationship, mm -hmm. which is yeah. also goes deeper into what other problems could be happening. Right. So go back into what we were just joking about, people saying relationship goals, because I can go to the bathroom in front of my partner, you know, do all of fart and burp and do I, all these things. <sighs> what happens is, you know, also real intimate relationships. These are relationships that you are intimate with. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't show vulnerability. Actually, it it's, you know, being super, super comfortable in your relationship becomes that you're not really like choosing to be your best self for the relationship mm -hmm. and yes. i think that that will you know aid to the loss of attraction in relationships mm -hmm. and then that's when it'll become when there's a loss of attraction then it becomes nitpicky into mm -hmm. what people are doing wrong mm -hmm. you got to look at that and mm -hmm. and don't beat yourself up that you're being shallow and really look at what's underneath it because I, you see couples that are like the old Yoda couples on the benches that are like technically not, you know, don't fit that whatever beautiful anymore. Yeah. And they think each other are the most beautiful thing on yeah. the planet. So right. if you love someone, you're just going to, you've got, you have rose colored glasses. You get yeah. that gift. You're like, yeah. they're beautiful to you. 100%. It doesn't matter. So yes, there is like the point of you want to keep yourself up for your mate and do the best for yourself. Yes. But if you're just doing it for your mate, that it's then that's still not a good enough yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. Nope. For me, right. it's like I want to stay healthy and my best for me. Yeah. Right. And I'm glad that my partner appreciates it. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't be the sole. You should. One hundred percent. Yes. You should never be doing something solely for the benefit of your partner or to keep your partner. Yeah. Ever. Yes isn't the 1950s when you have those little manuals like make sure that you have your pearls on when your husband comes yeah, home no. and your makeup on and no. your heels on like no, no i got my fluffy slippers on and i think that a lot of people kind of that's great because i use the word attraction mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand what that word means right, right. attraction is just this flow of energy between yes. you um and i think that that has nothing to do with what you're wearing and it, it, it has everything to do with how you own yourself and like mm -hmm. just how you, you know, present yourself and honoring. And I think you're just hitting it like pleasuring your partner is never the way to go. In fact, the key to even like passionate sex is for you to focus on pleasuring yourself because your partner, you both of you are just going to like, you know, that's that's like the key to most yeah, like, you're going to find the way that you fit together. Yeah. Right. I totally if you're agree. if you're coming into yeah. it for what can I bring to the relationship and what can I gain from the relationship instead of just putting on a performance. Yeah. That's where you're going to get more deep and more authentic and more genuine oh, with your yeah. partner. Well, whether it's in bed or whether it's in the relationship. I right. think when you're putting on a performance, you just uh, goes back to point number 1 we yeah. made, you're not mm -hmm. free in the relationship nope. to be yourself. Right. Yeah. So you know. that's the relationship, the number one relationship, like Crystal talks about all the time, is with yourself. So if with you're not showing up with yourself in that relationship with your partner... You're not in the relationship. You're not in right. it. Right. Right. It's not real. And I think the goal for every relationship really needs to be how intimate can you be? Yeah. How much yourself can you be? You should always be striving for deeper levels of intimacy. And intimacy yes. is beyond sex or that kind of yeah. thing. It is how intimate can you be with who you are? Yes. And uh, Esther Perel, she's one of my, I love her as mm -hmm. far as relationships mm -hmm. go. Um, but she always says that intimacy is into me, you see. Yes. And you can't have somebody oh. see who you really are without, with you holding a mask. What happens is that, you know, we get into relationships not truly being our authentic selves. And then we nitpick at our partners for not being who we want them to be. That's where the expectations come from. When really you're the one showing up with the mask. So the more pleasure you get out of life, the more that you are so focused on who you are, what you have to give, and what you want, that's when you start showing up mm -hmm. fully because mm -hmm. you know exactly what you have to give, you know exactly what you want, and you're not going to expect your partner to give you anything. You're going to choose the right partner that just also does the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so yes. it's, it's, that's what authenticity is. Like Authenticity is like taking off the mask and being vulnerable to show up you know, mm -hmm. as you mm -hmm. are in the best way, you know? Yes. Well, here's the thing. I think you just, aha, you truth bombed in my head was that if you're showing up with a mask in the relationship, your partner's in love with your mask. 100%. Yes. They're not. They're having a relationship with your mask. And then you get pissed when they're idolizing your mask. You know, and they're not, it's not seeing really you. who you are. Oh, they mm -hmm. don't understand me. It's like you don't give them a chance. It's your you're not fault. showing them yeah. you. Yeah. Right. 
So mm -hmm. I think, but we, we do that in life too, I 100%. think. 100%. Uh, and it, it's, it takes courage to start taking off the masks that have protected us. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what a relationship is about. You continue to take those layers off and go, here's me, I'm picking out. Do yeah. you yeah. accept me? Oh, good, I can get rid of that because it's too heavy to carry those costume changes around through life. I'm yes. sorry. Yes, Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. And when you were doing these PowerPoints, you accidentally typed in real relationships yeah. mm -hmm. and I think that that's so beautiful because it's like our goal in life is to have real relationships and I think that in order for us to be real we have to we have to take off the mask we have to be yeah. willing and, and I know mm -hmm. a lot of things have happened you guys help a lot of people with trauma mm -hmm. and yeah. you know deep-rooted issues and you know our whole goal is to heal you know from those mm -hmm. Um, but the more you take off your mask and allow yourself to be seen, the more healing you can do. Too. 100%. Yeah. 100%. You guys, uh, keep commenting, Ooh. give us your questions, and uh, drop a truth bomb. I love those truth bombs you're dropping. Drop some more. Uh, somebody wants to see your Ariel shirt. Oh, my gosh. Okay, it's guys. It's so amazing. A little I, bit more of the can, Ariel. Can yep. you see it? Yeah. Right there. It's my oh. Ariel, Ozzy Osbourne. She's, Ozzy got, Osbourne she's all tatted Ariel. up. I actually, this was from Crystal for Christmas. Yes. I guess she, she got me a bunch of them, and they just totally fit me. And they're so cute. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, yes, yes. Like, yes. Okay, so let's go on to our second um, point we were hashing yeah. with, and that right. is that's being comfortable fighting oh. with each other oh, yes. completely openly, like, fuck you, you know, um, yeah. I'm totally free to express how you feel with your partner, yes. without having abuse of course. Um, yeah, let's, let's not, stay with that. Yeah, let's, let's stay with that. Without mm -hmm. being afraid that you're going to scare them away or you're yes. going to break up because of the fight. Yeah. So the, the goal here is to be able to engage in a conversation, in a fight, in a disagreement, whatever it is, without the fear that you are going to lose your partner or make them run away or yeah. that you are going to mm -hmm. have enough and walk away. If you cannot have an engaged conversation like that, a disagreement, an argument, whatever you want to call it, Knowing that once this is over, we're going to be stronger because of it, right. then you're not strong enough to have those relationships. Yeah. Well, I think this is such an important thing because we do get um, people that say, we never fight as a couple. We've never had a fight. And I'm like, my question then is, what are you repressing? Yeah. Yes. Um, because we're human. Yeah. I have gotten in a spat with almost everybody I know, not like knocked down, but everybody has misunderstandings 100%. at one point or another. Um, something's heard the wrong way, something's accepted the wrong way. Yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that the relationship's over. It just means let's talk about let's it now. Talk about it. Yeah. So I think it comes down to maturity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, I mean, here's the thing. Like, there, there's going to be conflict in every single relationship. And it's going to be handled in different ways based mm -hmm. off the relationship. But, like, I, I just think that, you know since we're all on this path of, you know, developing and expanding ourselves and, you know, and how this translates into relationships, I think the art of relationships is really, you know, how to handle conflict. Yes. <laughs> and I think that, you know, especially in our intimate relationships, either, you know, it's not healthy to either shut mm -hmm. down and it's not healthy to, you know, destroy your significant other for right. things that they do. I think that, you know, um, the art of relationships is really tr having, uh, being able to fight the right way in, in yes. fighting in a way that, you know, um, yeah, choosing the, I mean, every fight's going to be different, like, mm -hmm. because every situation is going to be different, you know, and I think that being able to do that, knowing that somebody is still going to stand by you, you know, and hear you out and say, I love you. Mm -hmm. right? I didn't understand what you said 20 minutes ago, but I love you mm -hmm. still, so, you right, know, right. Mm -hmm. and being okay with conflict, I think is just maturity. And I, I think, think so a too. lot of people lack it. And I think another piece to this is owning, if you're the one that is going through something, owning that part, Yeah. you know, whether it's after the fact or whatever, like, yeah. Hey, I was in a total reaction. I'm, yeah. I apologize. I was reactionary and thank you for holding space and not taking it personal so I could get through that. And again, we're not that. talking about a codependent abuser and no. No. that no, kind of thing. This is totally different. This is normal. Yeah. Like, if, yeah. owning really. your stuff, not abusing and then apologizing. Yeah. Because then you've got a exactly. codependent thing, which go listen to Crystal's podcast that we did with her last. And we talked yes. a lot about the dynamics of the codependent relationship. Oh my God. Um, 
I think another thing about fighting is that you have to understand when your partner blows up yeah. that they're getting triggered. Yeah. Yes. And it's not about you. Yes. That's important. I love when you said holding space because mm-hmm. I see that like even um, with Andrew, you know, like I can react for no reason at all. Like right. it could just come up. There's mm-hmm. a lot of reasons why we react because we're mm-hmm. human. And, and, you know, how he handles it is he just doesn't react. You know, his thing yes. is, oh, I could, something happened with, I don't know what happened with her, <laughs> right. but I'll just be over here loving on her until she figures it out, you know? Yeah. And it's like sometimes you do need to do, and yeah. I feel like a lot of women who have kids, like, they know how to do that with their kids, yeah. you know? And you find a way to do that with your children, but at the same time, you hold your significant other. And now, again, there's the maturity part. Your significant right. other shouldn't be you know, fighting and throwing tantrums. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're able to hold space for so many other people in our lives, but when it comes to intimate partners, we have zero tolerance. And you know, you have to understand that when your partner is going into a reaction, it's likely a part of their wounded child self that is reacting. So we can have patience Mm -hmm. with our children, but realize that our partner is reacting from some wounded child. Like suddenly Mm -hmm. they might be acting like they're 12 and you're like, you were a grown ass adult a minute ago and now you're like you're 12. Take a step back, yes. realize it's not about you, mm-hmm. and, and stop judging them yeah. for being a kid because they're they're in a reaction yeah. to something that happened way before you showed up. Yeah, you're triggering it. You're helping to unpack that baggage and move on stronger and more authentic and intimate in that relationship. Yeah. Well, and I'm telling you, Dave and I had a few moments like that the first few months of our oh, yeah. relationship because we'd both come out of traumatic relationships. Mm-hmm. And had to stop and realize I'm reacting to this situation I, I was in. I love the story you guys told about the parking lot where everyone was dancing. Oh, and like, yeah. You did it. Uh-huh. She, she told this story in a past video we did on the Ladies' Push, the mm-hmm. interview that we did. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. About, yeah. and then you just like kind of got in the car. And yeah, I was five years old. I mm-hmm. was like, nope, not. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's like regressed. Meanwhile, even in that moment, and this was fresh into the relationship, in that moment, I was like, okay. You don't have to come out and dance with me with these strangers. I'm going to go dance with these strangers, and I'll be back in a minute. I went out, and I went and did my thing, came back to the car, and she was still acting like she was five. So we dealt with it. It was a bunch of people doing hokey pokey in the parking mm-hmm. lot. So, yeah, that sounded really And you got like, dance no. with strangers in the parking lot. <laughs> and so if you want to go watch the interview we did with Chris, yes. that's a great story, but it's a long one and to tell. But that one is on theladiescoach.com. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the third one we kind of hashed around is one of my, okay, this is a pet peeve of mine. When I'm out with my girls, right? Hasn't been for a long time because my my friends are a lot more grown now, but. (laughs) Nobody um, wants to go anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) We're all just Netflix and chilling, just like real Netflix. That's old folk folk, folk clubbing. So (laughs) it's when you are out on a guy's night or a girl's night and your phone is blowing up from your significant other and they're like hey I'm home with you know our five-year-old I don't know what she wants how do you get her to calm down when she's you know and calls would come in like this from friends husbands or whatever like didn't you have this child together doesn't he know like how to take care of the child without you oh yeah and the person will be like oh no no, no. and they're freaking out in the middle of yeah playtime and but really their spouse is not having a problem he knows how to put Susie to bed Mm -hmm. you know he's just making sure that she's not putting a dollar in a stripper's g-string you know so there's there's that insecurity (laughs) there will be no orangutan strippers at this party we had a conversation okay that probably needs to be explained but I don't remember what the joke was yeah it was was right before this call Um, So we do have a couple questions, and I do want to say, if you've got those questions on this live call, save them to the end. We'll have a QA and a at the end, so save those questions. Um, If you're... Wait, oh yeah, go ahead, sorry. If you're um, watching after the event, after the live call, go ahead and drop those questions in the comments, and we'll answer them there. Yeah, so let us know, too, if you've had this experience where you're out with your friend or friends, and their phone is just getting blown up by their significant others, and you're like, can we just, like, chill and drink some wine and talk about life? Because you can you, can't. Can you just say, hashtag insecurity, hashtag weak ass? It's all I thought you were going to keep going, because I was like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> weak ass bitch. <laughs> hashtag... Or have you been the one, yeah. have you been the one, insecure, mm-hmm. you know, texting your boyfriend, girlfriend, when they're out... 
with their friends because you're feeling insecure that what are they doing, what are they doing? If you're feeling mm -hmm. that way, some kind of way about it, then you gotta look at, is it your insecurity or yes. are you really feeling like they're screwing around? What's the real story? Yeah. And you're not a power couple if this is happening. Yes. Right. I promise you. Either way, address those issues. Whether it's yeah. your insecurity, address your, your insecurity. And if it's you're picking up something from your partner, address that. Yeah. 100%. So. Yeah, because sweeping it under the rug and acting like it's not, it's just when, you know, I get emails of, oh, my, my boyfriend just went to his friend's bachelor party like, and I'm having anxiety about it. If you are at a point where you're having anxiety because your friend is celebrating his friend, then there's obviously some conflict in the relationship that you're overlooking or there's mm -hmm. something, some healing that it, there's an opportunity for healing on your end. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, it's going back to what we said. You have to be real. I mean, you have to take, you have to be authentic and you have to, you know, be able to see what it is that you're trying not to see, yeah. you know, yeah. you're trying to hide. And, um, yeah, I mean, like I see it on both ends and I think that, you know, go, going back to the freedom, like there's a certain amount of freedom that needs to exist mm -hmm. in relationships. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I mean, and we were talking about it, your significant other is not going to be everything for you. Yes. Um, and so it's really, really important to have other, you know, relationships around you. And although you have a pri like a primary relationship where you're, it's like a soulful connection with somebody um, where you're sharing a lot with them, they're not everything for you I mean mm -hmm. I Andrew's not my girlfriend mm -hmm. okay <laughs> um, he's not interested in the same shit I'm interested right, in right. like in the same things that sometimes I just want to I want to talk to somebody who understands you know the things right. I want to if I want to talk shit right. I want to talk with my girlfriend who understands it because Andrew's just not he's just sometimes. not <laughs> he's not a shit talker he's you just know. not mm -hmm. you know it's sometimes when you like a Latina club meeting you know, we need to and put I'm some just J honorary. we need to put we need to put on the J Lo, make so, some sangria. You know, and, I'm, I'm the honorary. You know, handle shit. Like I mean, you have to handle it. And I, I, <laughs> I can be the Irish J Lo. Yeah. Oh God, that's not really pretty. Yeah, it's just, just not put me up in that cute J Lo. But um, you ain't seen but, me all dolled up. Oh no, but it goes back to just what kidding. you said about the shaman, like mm -hmm. what what you talked about before, right. like how the shaman used to be everything. You right. know, like the village would see the shaman for everything, mm -hmm. and I think that the reason why relationships are so important to me and helping women navigate is because relationships are important. It's not just intimate. It's like the relationships yes. you have around you that that fill the spirit, and I think that you know, just being focused on your intimate and not allowing the space for your partner to hang out and be free with other people is just, that's control. Yeah, and then, again, go back and listen to the podcast on codependency we did with Crystal yes. because if you're going into this, checking up on each other, there's a codependency happening in that relationship. Mm -hmm. You better believe it because one of mm -hmm. you is trying to be controlling of the other. Yeah. And then you got a problem. Yes. So I also want to stress just quick injection about codependent relationships where you've got a narcissist person and you've got the the other person that's the, the codependent. codependent person. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an extreme saying narcissist. But you you both have a problem. Right. It's not just the person who's doing the abusing. It's the person that continues to return to the abusing. Yeah. Right. So, so um, one of the key components here is hashtag personal responsibility yes so when you're showing up to the relationship you are responsible for your reactions you yeah. are responsible for how you're showing up to this relationship and your partner is responsible for their part of it personal responsibility will get you everywhere yeah right. i agree so if you are loving this content subscribe because we drop videos every week and uh, if you're liking this obviously hit that like button hit that thumbs up and drop a comment in the below with the truth in bombs the below. In, in the, the below. below, in the comments in below, the below. It's with your truth bomb moments. It's a place where you can show your appreciation. <laughs> in the in below. The below. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, subscribe because we want to see you back here again. We yes. love it when you show up. We have such yes. a party online. It's so great. Okay, number four. Now, Crystal did a big old podcast on this one. Yeah. Yes. Feeling phone safe. Mine was more so... Y'all don't need What's to be on your significant here? other's phone, okay? Mm -hmm. right. But Why? here's the thing, and here's the thing, because I get a lot of questions. Well, what if, like, I'm just, you know, hit my husband's phone's ringing, and it that's completely different, right. mm -hmm. okay? I'm not talking about, like, oh, Susie's calling you. Like, this mm -hmm. isn't a big deal. Um, I'm talking about going into your partner's phone with the intention to find bad. Yes. That... 
says more about your relationship mm. than you think. Well, if he has nothing to hide, then you know, it, right. then I should be able to. No, this is this is your you know reasoning. You know, it's like creating some kind of possible excuse for what you already know to be true in your relationship. Because you're operating from a state of fear. Yeah. If you have this phone and your partner picks it up and you cringe, you're operating from fear. Yeah. If you pick up the phone and your partner cringes, they're operating from fear. Mm -hmm. Address the situation. Yeah. And it goes both ways. I mean, there's like, you know, do the math. There's like six different ways this could go, but... I'm just throwing that on it with six, but you know. it's exactly six. <laughs> it's all six ways. No, but six. But I mean, it's the matrix. Let's say both of you are totally innocent. And there's nothing incriminating on your phone. Yeah. But you're both paranoid about the other one checking the phone. Yeah. Now there's some deep insecurity in there mm-hmm. on both mm-hmm. of your parts that really isn't valid. Yeah. Because you have nothing to hide. Yeah. So sometimes you have nothing to hide, but you're still scrin- cringing. Yeah. Because you've got a past fear mm-hmm. that your partner is going to attack you for something that is totally innocent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because in the past you may have been attacked for things that were not even your fault. Or your partner is looking for something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and you're hiding your phone because they're going to make something up around anything. I mean, I've been on both sides of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ugh. Ah, but you're... that is not a power couple. Not a power couple. Mm-hmm. Not a power couple. I mean, like, this is like a very, you know, um, it seems like an insignificant behavior because a lot of relationships do this, but it's a hot topic because mm-hmm. what it does is it shines a light on something deeper that's happening in the relationship. Yes. And there's a lot of, like, silly, you know, behaviors that happen in relationships that actually shine a light on mm-hmm. the insecurities that are mm-hmm. going right. down in crazy town. And like yes. that kind of behavior when you're checking your spouse because he has nothing to hide because you just want to make sure is not only just a sign of insecurity, it's also control. It's you controlling the relationship and what happens. And again, going back to the freedom mm-hmm. in a relationship, I don't want anybody monitoring me. Right. You know, I'm a grown ass woman. Like, and I'm choosing the relationship. I'm choosing to respect my relationship and I'm choosing to love and show my best self. Um, I'm not trying to be monitored. Right. Well, I know, I, having experienced this, I, one of my exes, when we split up, copied my entire email Stop. inbox and, mm-hmm. like, started sending my emails to his parents and other people and, like, oh, she said this and she said this. He was looking for little clues about if I had other lovers and other this, and I didn't, but... They were just like going back and forth, and people would email me and go, "What is he doing?" And like, <laughs> oh my mm-hmm. god, it was just kind of horrifying. And I'm like, I, I, we just broke up, and you know, yeah. nothing was happening. It was just turned into a big yeah. circus. So that is hashtag significance of issues, right? So you know, I just on... I'm hashtagging today. It's it's my thing today. What we're talking about modern love. That's right. Hashtag, hashtag modern love. Hashtag okay. Okay, guys, this one is my favorite point. Mm. My absolute favorite point because when I bring this up, so many people react. Mm. Okay, and let me let me precursor this, pre preface this, that's the word I'm looking for, um, with the fact that I have to be the queen in my relationship. Yes. I am the diva. I am number one. Okay. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't she mean... She said, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I already know this. I, but, I signed up But David is also, like, secure enough and powerful yeah, enough that... that I have to be number one. Right. So that's... What, okay. But here's what... Here's what it is. When here's, you can see... Okay, go ahead. A beautiful person. Mm-hmm. A beautiful woman or a beautiful man. And you can say to your partner, oh my gosh, that person is so gorgeous. Look at this. Just and your say. partner has no reaction. Like... What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? And they all of a sudden start thinking that you're attracted to someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you may not be attracted to that person on a sexual level. You're just, just you're just admiring beauty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's okay because we all you'd be blind to not see a beautiful person. Yeah. Now, if you're seeing a beautiful person, you're going, Oh my gosh, yeah. but I want them. If it has that is that's, yes. that's if it has the longing to it, then there's an issue. In yourself or your relationship. Yes. Right. So this one is a deep one because so many people, if their guy looks at another girl, Mm -hmm. he's doing it on the DL for for one because he's afraid you're going to, he's going to get. You're going to react. Right. 
But I think we should make our partners feel safe enough to be like, that's a very beautiful person. And mm-hmm. you can both say, oh, that's a very beautiful person. Yes. And you know? I think just if we could just, I mean, it's a natural feeling. Like, especially, um, you know, like when you sense, not even just look-wise, mm-hmm. but as a feminine, if you feel a masculine energy passing by you, it doesn't even matter if it's old, young, whatever. Mm-hmm. If you feel, there's a there's like this polarity. If you feel an energy walk by, it's primal, you're going to look. Right. It's a primal like uh, feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. And the same with, you know, guys, if there's like this feminine that walks in and I'm not just, I'm not, I'm, this is mm-hmm. not gender based. I'm just no, saying, this is, I'm just talking about, this uh, is just roles. Not, yeah. Right. Um, you know, I, you know, if they, if you feel that energy, it's just, it's, you're going to turn and it's, you're going to look. And especially mm-hmm. with attraction. I mean, like, that's just a normal thing. Now, the difference mm-hmm. is if your significant other is being disrespectful with it, which mm-hmm. is that longing that you're talking mm-hmm. about. Like, oh, look at like and Damn. You, see, you know? Yeah, yeah, that would be. That weird. is like, okay. And then you're like, no, I don't yes. think so. Mm-hmm. No. So, um, that's a deep one to work on because that yeah. hits you. We saved that one for last. We got we got a really good bonus tip for you coming yeah. up, but we saved it for last because it's such a deep primal yes. thing. Okay, they did a story, a study on this. Mm. Okay, with men and women, and it's a book that you should get, especially if you're just having kids. It's called Gender Matters. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's really good, and I read it like in the bookstore. I like read the whole thing because it was so good to put it on. Um, but it talks about the real differences between the male and the female, mm-hmm. as far as uh, primally, primally, where men have uh, less color receptors in certain areas, mm-hmm. and women have uh, this ability to see like three hundred and fifty different shades of whatever. And they're like, they think that that evolved from. Women who used to be the hunter gatherers when they yeah. took, put the babies on their backs and they were like looking for herbs and like this one that's this color green is poisonous. Yeah. This one, this is fine. So the yeah. the female mm-hmm. eye naturally developed more color receptors. Well, the men had to go hunt, so they had like more of a limited. So if you've ever taken your guy to the paint store and you've gone, I this one's a little bit too red. This one's a little bit pink. They're like it's they're so like true. it's all red. It's red. Yeah, it's just red because <laughs> men have. A are you whole talking about lot all less. Less. They also see yeah. more narrow. They right. we see uh, peripheral. Right. Yeah. More yeah. Periphery. And mm-hmm. men are more focused. Here. Focused. And they were like that evolved with the the male eye because they need to see where the lion is, where the gazelle is, yeah, they and they need to be like. Poof. So it's like with strong colors and movement, yes. they're really. So we we're driving down the street one day. Oh yeah. And this, this is fun. blonde, mm-hmm. this blonde, really cute blonde. Mm-hmm. zips by us going the opposite way on a red scooter mm-hmm. and red is like really strong powerful yeah, and color. before and then, before i knew what was happening he goes my like this. head like snapped around he says, and i started laughing my ass off because i knew exactly what happened he was like looking at the gazelle mm-hmm. and i'm like <laughs> yeah because it's this red that was red, tonight's dinner and yeah he's like you know, and I just started laughing. I'm like, oh my gosh, look what yeah. just happened. And we were just laughing. I'm like, you, you just did something so primal, right. so fast yeah. without even thinking about but it. But we, yeah. we had talked about the book, too. Yeah. So, and red is one of those colors, which is why you see um, a little boys' rooms in, like, bright colors. Because mm-hmm. little boys will respond to that color better mm-hmm. than, like, pastels, right. where pastels, little girls will respond to better. So there's actually something biological behind that thing. So. And I think that's important to understand, especially since, as it relates to relationships, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because there are so many things that um, we just overlook because we make it personal. Mm-hmm. We make, and again, it's like we make our significant others, you know, I like the saying, um, like we make our significant others like hairy girlfriends yeah. and vice versa. And I think that if there's so many differences, you know, mm-hmm. you have your girlfriends, but then if you're in a relationship with a man and you're a woman, like there's so many differences. I think the other thing to that that I wanted to bring up is the defense mechanism of women. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. when there's an insecurity that there's a beautiful woman around, the first instinct of women is to tear her down. Right. And in Stop front of your significant other right. sometimes. Um, because and I think that that's a really it's really important that we take a look at those types of behavior. Sometimes it's not even in front of our significant other. I see it online. Mm-hmm. I see it I see it at the grocery store where you judge somebody for their cleavage showing or like they're just showing way too much or how could somebody post something like that? 
it's really important to see these behaviors because it calls out the insecurities that we have oh, within yeah. and it challenges, you know, so if somebody we feel is too sexual in a photo, what that's doing is it gives an opportunity to challenge the, your sexuality and how, comfor- how, how comfortable you are with it because if you are, nothing like that is going to matter mm-hmm. to you, mm-hmm. you know, and so I think a lot of the times we're so... Um, restricted in our relationships because we are so judgmental about how others, you know, should be. Right. But really, that's calling out a restriction that we have within. And I think that that's like a, and it's our defense mechanism. So mm-hmm. there's, there we could do a whole live stream just on this yeah. area. Yeah. So, <laughs> but Christy says, is, uh, so what you're saying is, I need to wear more red. And Actually, I said, yes, and you have to run really, really fast. Just real fast. Just run really Get fast. Out. Get a red scooter <laughs> and wear red. No, but it's true, though. Men are, men are attracted to reds and, you know, the strong colors. So it's right. very interesting. Yeah. Guys, take a moment. Hit the like button if you haven't Yay. already. Drop a truth bomb. You know we love our truth bombs. Yep. Okay, so Crystal has a... Awesome bonus tip that we're, we're gonna already throw to at the you. bonus. We are already to the bonus tip. Oh my god. We'll do a QA after the bonus. Okay. So. so a power couple has one like all power couples of all power couples. Mm-hmm. Every power couple has one thing in common. They all have a relationship vision. And a relationship vision does this. Uh Two people are completely self-aware. They know what they value most in life. They know what they have to offer. Um, and they're able to, like what we were talking about, co-create together. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't be in a fulfilling relationship without knowing what it is that you actually want. And again, going back to the strengths and weaknesses, you really need to know and honor like what you have to offer. Right. Mm-hmm. Because then, you know, if you, if you don't and you don't even know what you value, you're going to be blind. It's like you're try and find relationships blindfolded and Mm -hmm. not knowing you're just trying to like fit a square peg in a round hole. So it's really, really important that for a relationship vision, you have self-awareness enough to know that, Hey, you know what? I do have weaknesses and I do have things I want to heal. And then also that you know what you truly, truly value in life because your partner that you're going to be spending the rest of your life with has to have, and this is really hard because everybody's like, Oh, my partner's Mm -hmm. so different. Values are always going to be different, but Mm -hmm. your core values have to be pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that your relationship vision and what you're creating together in life, you know, are based off the values you both are upholding. Personal values can be different because you Mm -hmm. guys are totally different people. But you want to make sure that your relationship vision is, you know, grounded by the values that you guys are going to instill in in your vision and things that you're going to be working towards. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you guys work together you know, and have a relationship. Mm -hmm. And in order for you guys to be able to do all of this, you guys have to be very clear about what it is that you're trying to work for. Like, I Mm -hmm. mean, and thinking years down the line, 10, 20, like what are we ultimately trying to do and what are we trying to achieve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of couples leave that to chance. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of hope that their partner will like sway over into their vision. And 10 years later, it's not working. Here's the thing, in my opinion, you have to have this vision before you even get into a relationship because otherwise Mm -hmm. you're not going to attract the partner with a similar vision. So you have to know what you want. So if you're in a relationship now, define your vision. Yeah. And if you're not in a relationship now, define your vision. Yeah. Find out what you want out of life, mm-hmm. what you want to bring to the table, where you want to go in life, and then you'll find somebody that matches that. Well, I think people make the mistake of just taking whatever the wind blows their way. And if you don't make a plan and yeah. you just want to have somebody in your life, you're just going to have somebody yeah. come to you and they're going to fill that void. And one of my favorite um, movies that kind of illustrates this is Practical Magic. Oh, I love that. Where one of my favorite movies. Sandra Bullock like makes like I want concoction. His, his favorite shape is star, and he's like she creates this impossible list. His eyes will have one of each color. Right, and then he shows up, and she's like she made the most impossible list because right. she didn't think this person would ever show up, and yeah. she didn't mm-hmm. want to uh, get hurt by love. But he shows up. He shows right. up. And yeah, I think that that's really important. And I think that as long as you know the feeling that you want to feel around a partner mm-hmm. or the things that you like, ha- you know, especially going into like, how do you want to feel adored? You know, mm-hmm. what is it? Because how you feel love is different than how I feel yes. love. 
And it's really important that we find partners that, you know, are able to show us the love that we can feel, right. you know, and sometimes it's not that we have, we have like, we're with partners who are bad people. Sometimes it's just, you guys have completely different core values right. and the way that you show love is different. Yes. And so the more clear you get, I actually, you know, like relationship visions and values, those are things that you should do before mm -hmm. getting into a relationship because the more clear you are about who you are, what you have to offer, what it is you ultimately want in life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be set plans, but you get clear about that. That way your core, you know, this inner guidance system is you have this compass that's already within you. And so when Joe Johnny Dirtbag walks by you, you're going to know like, oh, no, nope, I already, mm -hmm. I already know my vision, Got I know it. the values, and I know how I want to be treated, and I already know you're a scumbag next. Mm -hmm. And what you'll, what you'll find is that the more clear you get, you know, you're able to feel it with people. You mm -hmm. know, you're able to gauge it a whole lot better. And I think it took us, I think everybody has to go through relationships to mm -hmm. get a little bit more clear yeah. about what feels right. But if you can get clear about like your values and just becoming more self-aware of like, hey, you know what? I move at this speed. I talk about it a lot on the podcast mm -hmm. about how your values kind of dictate or show you your like mm -hmm. how you vibe in life and how you move. And, um, you know, like I say, my values show me I move at a glacial speed, speed you know. Mm -hmm. So it's important for my partner to also move at that same speed. Right. Not mm -hmm. to say that we're, it has nothing to do with laziness or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just how you right. build relationships and how. And so if I had my values and then I see an adventurer or somebody who loves to travel and loves to be, you know, adventure seeking and jump out of planes and do all those things, although I love doing that, if I'm not clear with who I am, I'm going to be unhappy because everything's going to be go, go, go in a way that's not going to vibe with me, right. you know? And so I think a lot of people are in relationships with different sets of values and then you don't feel like you're enough with that person mm -hmm. and that person right. feels like you're not doing enough mm -hmm. when really both of you are doing exactly what you need to be doing. You just don't, you just aren't, you just like fitting a square peg in a round hole. Right. Yeah. And I think another thing I see women doing and men mm -hmm. is they don't understand their partner's love language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to be in a relationship where you haven't set your relationship vision, you're struggling yet, but it's a good relationship. Yeah. And, and your partner wants to give you something from their heart that means something to them, but it's not exactly what you want. Yeah. It's, it's more meaningful. It's like maybe that's not exactly something that I would have wanted. And then mm -hmm. I see women and men going, but they should have known I wanted this. They should have known that I wanted flowers and stuff. Yeah. They should yeah. have known I wanted this diamond. They should have known I wanted this purse. Yeah. They should, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yet their partner has like gone out and found something that meant something to them. And to mm -hmm. me, yeah. that's more of a gift of themselves yes. than for them to like go Absolutely. on my Amazon wish list and be like, bah, 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 bah. that's easy. Yeah. yeah. So before you berate your partner, Think about what they're, they're showing giving up. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? If that's, um, there was a movie with John Travolta where he, he had a fancy for this lady and she would make chairs. That's my favorite. So, phenomena. Phenomena. So he would go and buy all of her chairs because it was what she loved to do. I'm getting emotional. Aww. So, yeah, it's just the. Um, can you see what your partner wants to do and can you show up in that capacity? Yeah. Are, are you excited and happy? Even if it's not necessarily, this guy didn't necessarily like the chairs, yeah. but he saw her. So if you can show up that way for your partner, that's a power couple. So it kind of goes both ways. If mm -hmm. your partner like finds that thing that you really want and investigates it and gives it to you, fantastic. But if they're giving you something from their heart mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that is not necessarily like, oh, well, I wish they should have known this, should have known this, yeah. then know that they're also coming from a very sincere, authentic place. Yeah. So Yeah, you don't want to be blind to how your partner is showing up. If you have this expectation of this is how I want my partner to show up, you're not seeing your partner, you're seeing your expectations. Yes. Right. You can't see past your expectations. And, and, you know, Tony Robbins says, change your expectations for appreciation mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. world changes around you. Yes. And that's especially in your relationships because, you know, ultimately we all crave to be appreciated mm -hmm. and appreciated for what we have to offer and what we have to give. And I think it, it gets, you know, for relationships that 
you know, I've already, you know, for you're with somebody for years and years, it's easy to start kind of like go back into being comfortable mm-hmm. and start just expecting that this person's just going to be around and mm-hmm. you're not really showing up and choosing this relationship every day and you're overlooking the things that this partner actually does for you. Mm-hmm. So you expect them to do X, Y, and Z, but you're forgetting all of the things that they are showing up, you know, with. And I think the, the more that you change those expectations into appreciating what they actually do on a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. changes the game in the relationship. You have more leverage to actually communicate then. You know, so if you are having problems in your relationship, I guarantee you for the next 30 days, if you just changed it from expectation to appreciation, I guarantee you'll have way more leverage to change that relationship. Your significant other might even be open to speaking with somebody. You know, your significant other might be open to doing more and more things because they feel appreciated. There's so many things that we feel like we have no control over, you know, with relationships. And, uh, you know, like it's, we're doomed because, you know, attraction isn't there or, you know, we're having mm-hmm. these issues in our relationship. Mm-hmm. But it really, if you could, if you know you're with a solid person but just shit's happening around you mm-hmm. and you just don't know how to you know, catch up with it all, I think the number one key is trading your expectations for appreciation. Mm -hmm. And then what that'll do is you'll see the relationship more clearly. You'll be able to get the leverage you need to either change the relationship or let the relationship go. Mm -hmm. But even when you let the relationship go, it's giving you that practice of acting out of love. Mm -hmm. And even then, it'll be an easier process to make that decision. So That brings up another really good... um, kind of bonus tip and that is the choosing so a power couple will choose each other every day they know that this person does not have to be with them this person can choose somebody totally different if they stop showing up for themselves if they stop showing up in the relationship they would want this person to choose out of their best interest whatever they want Mm -hmm. so a power couple will choose themselves and this partner over and over and over again, brand new, fresh every day. Yeah, and it helps because you know at the end of the at the end of the day, you're not stuck with somebody. No, you may mm-hmm. you may make it. Your mm-hmm. mind makes up excuses and makes it like you are because you're. But you're not victim. Mm-hmm. You're in a relationship because you choose to be in that relationship, and and that goes with friendships and anybody else around you. Uh, a relationship exists because there's two people choosing to participate yes. in it, and so. The, the goal is is checking yourself first, right? Mm-hmm. It's easy to place blame, and sometimes maybe your partner did something. But if you're choosing to be in that relationship, you're also in charge of the rehabilitation of that relationship. Mm-hmm. So you have to choose to heal that relationship. So you can't blame your partner for that if, unless it's something that you want to walk away from. But I think that we all have the choice. Like yes. you said, I mean, mm-hmm. like it, that's what a relationship is, is you are building this, what yes. is it called, real Real, real relationship, real relationship and with real life connection. relationship. All of life is choice. Yeah. I don't care if it's jobs. I don't care if it's a career. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's friendships. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's relationships or fake relationships. <laughs> fake relationships. That's not that's a vacation. Amazing. Oh my god! That's <laughs> Hashtag amazing. fake Asians. Uh, fake relationships. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. So um, you always have a choice. Your life (laughs) is built out of every choice in every moment. What do you choose? Exactly. Mic drop. So if you've gotten a tremendous amount out of this and you want to hear more, go ahead and subscribe. This is not the last time that we're going to have Crystal on. Right. And it is question time, so lay it on us. Yes. We're ready for your questions. I know you've been asking them all along. Right, right, right. right. Hit us with it, and we're ready to answer. So let's let's spend a few minutes answering some questions before the giveaway. Hang out with us, because in a few minutes, we're going to give away Crystal's book, plus Mm -hmm. some other things that may or may not be Crystal's. (laughs) <laughs> but or they might crystal be crystals. Might steal your crystals. Oh. Uh, and oh, I yeah. Let, I might steal. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I knew we got. Oh, I questions. won. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about your etiquette in a moment. Let's see. <laughs> Next webinar. Next Let's webinar. See. Right. Here's a question. Okay. okay so okay. the first Just... question is, what does it mean, or how can you quit having the same fight in a random cycle? We can conquer almost anything, but keep having repeat headbutts over certain things and can't seem to figure a solution. 
Well, your fight is probably not what you're fighting about. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you got to find out, really analyze, mm-hmm. and do some exploration about what you're really fighting about. Because you're both triggering the same thing. It seems mm-hmm. on the surface like you're fighting about this one thing. And believe me, I've been here. Yes. <laughs> and but it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. And you're yeah. reacting to something. So it's some insecurity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So follow the insecurity. Follow the fear of judgment. Follow the fear of rejection. Follow the fear of abandonment. And Find out what's underneath what's getting triggered. Yeah. Some keys with this is to, number one, recognize how old you seem to be in that reaction when this happens yes. and how old your partner seems to be in the reaction when that happens. I would say if sit down with your partner when you're not having this same argument Mm -hmm. and say let's talk about this outside of before this argument starts again and look at like david said how old do you feel when when you're going into this reaction how old do i feel and kind of follow the rabbit hole down to where the root is and then also yeah that's huge Mm -hmm. and i think also if this i mean if you were to let go, like if you were to pick and choose your battles, is this fight going to completely destroy your relationship? Does this even ma- like matter in the grand scheme of things? So there's things that I catch myself fighting with Andrew about. And then when I think about it, I'm like, this actually has no- like it, it, If I were to let this go, it would do nothing to my life. <laughs> like, right. So it's like really just looking and seeing, is this something I can let go and just, you know... Uh, move forward yeah move forward with and just let him have it and we can just pick and choose our battles here or is it something that you're trying to convey that's not getting through because you guys are reacting Mm -hmm. so one Uh, partner for sure is not being heard and you got to look at uh, we talked about positional arguing Mm -hmm. and if you both get into the position that I want to win nobody's ever going to win you got to like find a compromise and it's easier said than done sometimes with that there's a book called getting to yes yes Um, And we'll probably drop that in the description, but that basically talks about how to get out of that positional you versus them Mm -hmm. into the um, win-win situation where you're both trying to gain from this uh, conversation in the best way possible. Another thing, another couple of tips with this is to, um, number one, have the conversations outside of the emotional reaction. So just because you're butting heads, don't drop it. Drop it for a while and then come back when you're more Mm cool-headed. Um, the other part is to have one or the other hold space when you're in this reaction yeah. and just let your partner go through the experience of that emotion or that reaction until they're done. That will help you to vent the emotion so you can get to what's underneath it. And if you're in a cyclical argument like mm-hmm. that and it, you just can't, if these tips don't get you there, then it really is good to get another set of eyes on the situation. Sure. Because if you got someone that's not in your emotional reaction, they can help you help you down the rabbit hole and uh, basically diffuse the bomb. Yeah. So. I have some other thing that kind of reminded me, like a power couple, um, you know, we were talking about fighting, but it really is important to choose somebody that you can fight with because yes. if there's mm-hmm. somebody, I think that that's just as mm-hmm. important as a, va- like a, as, as, you know, in, in part of your relationship vision because you can mm-hmm. choose, like you might, everything is, you know, you guys, connect you guys have the same vision and values and all those things but how you fight says a lot about being a power Mm -hmm. couple are you demeaning to the other person Mm -hmm. are you you know i see a lot of you know when i found out that andrew is somebody i want to be with for the rest of my life and was is just how he handles conflict and how he handles you know just yeah arguments Mm -hmm. and fights because you really, if you have two people going at it together, it's really hard to sustain a relationship long term. Totally. Mm-hmm. And so totally. you really do need to pick a, a person that actually knows how to fight. Right. Yeah. And there's in an a, art to fighting. It's an art. And yes. there's an, you yes. know, there's or some having standards. a passionate discussion. Mm-hmm. Right. It you really can call is. it a fight if you want, or you can call it a passionate discussion. And there's a line between having a fight or in being abusive. Yes. Right? There's a big yes. difference. Yeah. And so, if it gets physical, address the issue. Well, and there's also a difference between, like, if, if David and I are in a squabble about something, mm-hmm. I can safely say, you're being a total ass. Mm-hmm. Right. And you go, right. you're being a fucking rat. Right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 yeah. and it's, yeah. we know that it's not coming from a space of, you're, you know, like a yeah. very abusive attacking of your character. It's like, yeah. no, you're talking about the behavior. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, yes, I need some chocolate. Yes. yes. And then I'm fine. So okay. the next so question we, we have is, how do you stay a power couple after having a baby? 
My um, hubby and I will be new parents in May. Everyone says our relationship will change, which, why wouldn't it? Don't listen to anybody else's stuff about it. But They're how to protecting. not have it change to the worst. Yeah. Okay, well. First yeah. off, I'm if you have a that. solid relationship, if you have a solid method of communicating, and you've already built a foundation, the parenting part is less relevant than can you communicate with your partner? Uh, well, if you're if you like you're a power couple now, and you're a mm -hmm. lot of these things apply to you that we talked about, like oh, I'm good with that, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. and having a baby, a child is going to bring you closer together yes. because, because you're you're a, working together, yes. right? keeping this little human alive. A uh, a child, just like having an influx of finances or an influx of money is not going to change who you are. It's not going to change the relationship yes. dynamic. It is going to make you more of who you are. So yes, if you have issues before you have a child, that's going to get magnified. Yes. If yes. you are solid before you have a child, that is going to get magnified. And I think there's only so much you can listen to with other people. I think that everybody is just drawing from their own experiences mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also project. And right. I mean, yes, does it, does having a baby change? Yeah. Well, your freedom changes for mm -hmm. sure. But you're as a couple, like he said, everything just, it just amplifies who you guys already are in the relationship. And if you already have a, you guys are already a power couple, you then have a solid relationship mm -hmm. vision <laughs> and you are already have a solid foundation of trust. And then what will happen is that you guys are just going to be working towards raising this human being and being there for each other. And that takes a lot of communication. That takes a lot of, hey, mm -hmm. I'm feeling really tired or I'm having, I'm, I'm experiencing these emotions that you probably don't aren't aware of right now because I know that a lot of mm -hmm. mothers feel different oh, yeah. types of emotions. And the more, you know, the more you communicate that to your significant other, the more you're real and authentic and vulnerable about what you need, you know, the more he can step in. The other part to this, I think, that I hear about mothers is, um, and, and relationship dynamics is that the way that you start getting in the groove of parenting is going to be mm -hmm. different than how your significant other does it, yeah. and that gets back into the expectations and appreciation. Right. Your significant other is going to have a different type of relationship with your son or daughter, mm -hmm. and that's okay because they have to have that bond, and they he has to figure it out and change the diapers. Don't get so angry at your significant other for not doing it the way that mm -hmm. you want it to be done because you're going to get in that groove. And I think that that's mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. a struggle that new parents face. Right. I um, think, too, because you're coming from different approaches of upbringing. Yeah. This is how my mom did it. This is how my mom did it. So you got to mm -hmm. find out how you guys do yeah. it. And yes. that, I think, is the important part. This is how we do it together, regardless mm -hmm. of how I did it or my mom can, did it or your mom right. did it. You can take input from other people, but ultimately this is between the two of you, how 100%. you choose to show up in the relationship. And, you know, I, we've raised kids, um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's so important that you honor who your child is. So, and you both of you, I think what keeps yes. you a power couple, because you can have arguments about how to raise the kid, and this yeah. is a big conflict with parents and power couples. But it goes uh, deeper than raising the kids. Right, yeah. it's, it's you got to both be on the same page. If you're a power couple, number one, you've already established that you're authentic within the relationship and you allow each other to be yourself. Yeah. You now extend that privilege, honor, whatever to your child because they are not somebody you're creating. Mm -hmm. They're going to create themselves and you are going to help them create themselves. Yeah. You so basically honor. pinball them so they don't really hurt themselves, <laughs> but you allow them to develop on their own. Right. Let, allow them to be authentic in themselves. And like I think when you're on the same page as parents with how you're going to raise the child, yeah. it makes you more of a power couple. But mm -hmm. on a practical note, to be a power couple after baby, get a really good day planner and plan your dates and, and do all those yes. practical things. Because dates, dates, dates. your sex says, life is going to be a little bit Yeah. Different. Actually, Chelsea Where just mentioned right? something about that. She said... Uh, so makeup sex isn't being physical, right? <laughs> <laughs> because of my comment earlier about it, if it gets physical, yeah. Um, another thing about the the parenting I was just gonna say was, oh my goodness, I just forgot. Mm -hmm. um, oh man, it'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. Let's grab one more question because yeah. we gotta do okay. the giveaway. Okay. Uh, oh, da 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 da. Let's see. You guys have some great questions. Yes. So Anna says, um, I, there was a guy in my office and he said that he was, um, what's the word? There's a word for it. Separated. Yes. If he's legally married, why did he tell me he was separated? 
And so everybody's been kind of going back and forth and, and going over the description of what separated means. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, well, how come I'm uh, attracting these same kinds of relationships and it just felt off to me and he says that they're still together for the children. But they're separate, so they're not living. But they're separate. He's living in the garage. Oh. So he's living in the garage, they're separated, um, and they're still together for the children. Okay. And what's her question? So the question was, uh, basically, why do I feel like I'm um, attracting the same kind of a relationship uh, over and over again? To me, if that, if you're if if she's attracting unavailable man, men, that mm -hmm. sounds like what she's attracting. Right. Um, there's you know there's a lot of fears that mm -hmm. you know that she she would just have to you know and you guys talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what your ultimate fear is. So sometimes right. we we choose unavailable men because there's a fear of getting too close to people. So mm -hmm. you know that you don't have to get that close. Right. Um, and so again, I'm all about questions, and I know that you guys can dive into this a little bit deeper because this is the kind of work that they do. Mm -hmm. But I'm all about questions, mm -hmm. right? The questions that we ask ourselves every single day. Mm -hmm. Because our questions, like the, the questions that we ask ourselves with it, we don't, we're not aware of, like the subconscious questions that we ask, they drive our lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important. This goes back to the motherhood question too. Um, you know, we can, we can get advice from a lot of people, but as soon as you make something difficult in your mind, it changes the mm -hmm. experience. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, when we're creating a relationship vision, the reason why we talk about a relationship vision is because it's a positive experience. It's something you're creating that's positive for mm -hmm. yourself. But the more you get wrapped up in negative questions or negative belief systems, the more they actually run your life mm -hmm. without you even knowing they are. So I think that the questions are why why am I attracting unavailable men? Well, that's just going to put that's it's that's gonna just going to attract mm -hmm. mm -hmm. unavailable men. But if you you know put in your relationship vision, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. if you are creating an ultimate vision for yourself, that's a positive. That's something that you are going to control and something that mm -hmm. you're going to attract. And the things that you work on every single day, you just naturally attract those things. I know it sounds woohoo. I'm not trying to be the sp secret mm -hmm. right here, mm -hmm. but a lot of the things that happen are these um, these questions and these belief systems that are running our lives. A lot of it has a lot to do with healing as well, which would change the question. But I think that ultimately, if I had any advice for you, your question is pretty, it's, you're just running into a wall. I yeah. mean, there's not really any It's kind open. of a self-created wall. Yeah. And I think I'm going to sum this up because every guy, until I met David, was the wrong guy. Okay? If I ever want to be really honest special. about it. Aww. But the question for me, because one of them I held on to a really long time, that's another story, but um, is why are you holding on to them for so long? If you mm -hmm. keep attracting the wrong guy, because every person that you attract up to the one that you that is the right guy is going to be the wrong guy that you're attracting mm -hmm. or the wrong girl or whatever, the question is why are you holding on to that for yes. so long? Why are you not just, oh, wrong one, send it back, wrong one, send it back. Um, so we hold on to these relationships longer, hoping that they're going to transform into the one, mm -hmm. when clearly they're still attached to someone else. They're still, and we hear this a lot, we're together for the kids. And I'm just living in the garage. So not the right time. No. I'm, and the good thing with this one is that she was only, um, that was only a thing for like two weeks before she was like, no, I just can't. Yeah. So getting faster at right. the catch and release yeah. right. getting faster means the that you've release. evolved from a state of always attracting these people to um, that program in the mind that is, how fast can I let go if I yes. find out this is the situation? Yeah. If this doesn't fit for me, how fast can I let go to find somebody that does fit my vision? And it may not be that you're attracting all these people. It's just that you're still in the audition process. Yeah. Yes, and so, you're evolving. So audition, 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 oh, yes. that's the one. So think of it a little bit less of I'm attracting, why am I attracting these whatever? Like, no, let's see who's on, let me read the resumes and then no, no, no. And also instead of like, why am I attracting these people? Why mm -hmm. don't you turn the question to, what is it that I want? What do yeah. I want? And I think that, you know, people are gonna come and go. And I think that what we were talking about earlier, you wanna, you wanna get into the practice of seeing patterns faster. Yeah. Because what happens is when you start to get to know yourself, you start to get to know what it is that's important to you. We talked about the values and the self-awareness. That's what that inner guidance system is. It, what it is, it's saying, 
you can look at and see people and see their patterns faster. That's not to say you're not going to get burnt anymore, but at the same time, it's just this ability to see people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a little bit quicker. So now it took you two weeks to say, okay, I can't do this because that's you're pretty still, darn good. That's pretty fast. And then soon you'll start to see little patterns of people yeah. too, just by their conversations and everything. It, it really is a goal just to kind of... It's a skill set like any other. So I think stop blaming yourself for attracting because sometimes we do. I mean, we're all about analyzing and self-growth. But sometimes it's just numbers yeah. and you got to just look at it, let mm -hmm. it go. Nope. Okay. Sorry. Next. Can I, you yeah. know, what song are you going to sing for me today? You know, just yeah, like exactly. audition your people. That's right. so cute. That's so I was in entertainment so for so long. So, but, You're like, you're so cute, but the door's right there. Next. Right. Yeah. You like, you know, when I was um, a band leader in back in the day and I wanted to find the right singer for my group, I wanted three girls. And so it was like days of auditioning yeah. girl singers. Yes. They were all pretty good, but until that right one walked in the mm -hmm. door, Alexis, look, you're listening somewhere. Um, I, I knew she was the one and I hired mm -hmm. her on the spot. But I, I probably listened to 50 girl singers before I found the one that was going to fit in my group, personality wise, voice wise, charisma wise, and that's it. So, you yes. guys. Uh, we're picking a number out of a hat. We've already got it pre-selected, and David's going to tell us who is our crystal winner. I'm going to show you your prizes. Of course, Crystal's book. Oh, there's another good... Oh! And we have three crystals we're putting in this package, and this is like our love power combination. Rose quartz, <gasps> garnet, and amethyst. Oh, that's so pretty. Because this is about... Um, primal love this is about spiritual love and this is about love of self and like just relationship love Aww. so they're kind of you put all three of them in your bedroom and if even if you're single it's about finding that balanced relationship and then yes. we, we're throwing this extra fun little cherry quartz Ooh, can I? which mm -hmm. is like it's all it's about called love spell it's all about puppy love it's yes. just kind of like the innocence of love this is so pretty and then we're throwing in as a bonus some extra little oils that we have selected that are so now you very guys sweet. Can see why I want all these. So, this is your super pack, and we're going to find out in a minute who is going to win if David will. David is going. Are you ready to select yes. our winner? So, um, for those of you who are watching live, go ahead and start the comment war because. Oh, yeah. This is how David picks the winner. Yes, I will be. I've got a random number in my head, and I will be picking that number. Um, backwards out of the comments so go ahead and start the comment war <laughs> drop some truth bombs want those crystals yep drop some I crystals and after that you want to give me if you have some seconds you're gonna time them i got some seconds 10 9 8 7 <laughs> 6 5 4 oh, three, crystals. Two, yeah. one. okay I just give you your camera. Okay. Come back. Here we go. <laughs> this is so fun. All right. So the winner is Kelly McKinnon. Kelly. So Kelly, hit us up on social media and drop us your information, and we will get that out to you. Yes. Yay. Yeah. Just private message us and. Oh, Lacey's on. You didn't see her. She's been on. Yeah, she's no, been on for I can't. Yeah. Well, it's because we're we're like we have all these things to look at. So. Yeah. I you, love you. You guys, we are so excited. This was a really, really fun live stream. We're gonna yeah. get our winner's crystals out to you probably tomorrow. Um and your book, which you are gonna love this book. There I'll are, sign it to Kelly. Yes. There's some really great practical advice about relationships and really about the relationship with yourself. <laughs> Christy and, Peterson says she kept quiet. <laughs> I yeah we were like Christy. She always wins she, things. Christy's like a magical winner. <laughs> I know. I know, um, I know. So guys, um, go. We're gonna post um, a special celebrity chakra quiz in the comments after uh, this goes back around. However, that I was Queen Latifah. Yeah, and I was a J Lo. You, that's so fitting. Yeah. So take the celebrity chakra quiz that we have created. It's gonna be in the description here a little while after we post up. Um, there's so much to learn about relationships, guys. We just like barely brush the surface. So follow us on all the socials at Zen Rose Garden. Follow Aww. Crystal Fuentes at the Ladies Coach. She has got so, Bex so says, much love stuff. Your or love your book. Bex yes. says, love your book, Chris. Oh, Because it's thank an awesome you. book. Or Barnes awesome and Noble, book. whatever thank David you, said. Yeah. yeah. So you guys, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like button. Drop some truth bombs. Yes. And um, go, check out, go check out that, uh, that quiz. Um, yeah. It's up in the banner somewhere. It's either up here oh, or up yeah. here. Whichever way we're Who going. Who are you? 
I was. Uh, he was Eva Green. Eva Green. Yeah, the third eye. The third eye one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and find yeah. out what celebrity. She totally fits her. me too. Yeah. Totally fits me. Yeah. Out of all I, of I them, think I need to I read the Queen Latifah one because I yes. do. Yes. 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 So it's up in the YouTube banner. Click on up Take there, the Celebrity Shocker Quiz and find out what celebrity shocker you are. It's really good. And you guys put in the comments in this yes. post. And we're and out because we're gonna go get some dinner. Yes. Subscribe yes. if you haven't yet. Oh wait, no, over here. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> Click to subscribe. I think they can you figure it yet. out, David. <laughs> I'm yeah. figuring it out. Comment us with any questions you, yes. you have after. If you're not watching yes. this live, comment as because we love to know what is on your mind and what's important to you with your relationships. Yes. yes. And if you have any questions, we will answer every single question that we come up against in the comments. So yes. if you uh, are watching the replay, comment down below and we will answer those questions for you. Um, we'll also be putting in the description how to get this book if you want it. Um, and that's about it. That's guys. it. We are Thank outies, you so outies, much for your time. Thank you mm -hmm. for having me. Oh, on Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. So fun. We love our crystal just like, like we love our crystals. Yes. And we love our lacy, so gratified soul. Yes. And also, guys, and if, if you guys have, I'm interrupting Go. everybody. If you guys have a topic that you want us to have Crystal come on yes. again and cover, and you want us to just cash it up, just leave that in the comments too. Yes. We're always coming up with. Yes. So this land. is our relationship guru. She's awesome. There you Majestic. go. Majestic. Hashtag relationships. Real relationships. Mm -hmm. You guys have a wonderful, beautiful, amazing day. We love you. Thank you, guys. And make it your most authentic. We'll see you next time. Baka, 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 baka. Nobody knows that, but uh, those people that have been watching Bedhead Diaries from way back when, you do know like, that. Like, subscribe, comment. And baka, baka. Baka, baka. Yes. Real relationship chicken says. <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys. All Bye. right. Bye. Peace out. Yay. Where's the stop here? Oh no! Hi guys, we're still going. Oh. <laughs> we're, still going. <laughs> we're still going. Tech support. We can dance. If you want to. Oh look at you all the You can leave chickens. your friends bark, behind. Bark, 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 oh bark, Kelly. Bark, bark, bark. Kelly killing it with the chicken. Yeah. Four.